Suck. Suck, 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 suck. That was me dabbing, by the oh, way. I could, I could tell. Oh, stop, Ben. It's too cool. Oh, sorry, everyone. Sorry. Can't handle Kinda that bass. Earthquake kills help. 10. Oh, God. Two tsunamis stop. strike there the world. There are car alarms going off. Okay, I think it's. I think the worst of it's over. Oh, thank God. Are you okay, Peter? Are you okay? Oh, my God. We lost Peter. Jesus Christ. I think it just sent a tsunami across the time. Exclusively to his flat. This has just been taken out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> no, Peter. Oh, I think I can still hear him. Some, his, oh, God. Get I've someone get a fishing line. line. It's all over oh, my desk up? now. Oh, oh, you're all right. You've got tsunami all over my desk. Oh. I'm sorry. I did a Sue cake all over your desk. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Sue cake. You pronounce the T. Sue cake. Oh, sorry. To Sue. Like. To Sue cake. To Tiramatsu. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm, delicious. This was very nearly going to be an in memoriam episode there. In memoriam. Yeah, we had to fill 58 minutes with nice stories about Peter and how much we loved and oh, missed him. God. God, it's hard to fill 58 minutes of nice <laughs> stories about me, I think. <laughs> <laughs> you are the worst. <laughs> stories about Peter were a bit, a bit much for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to Poddy. It's the official Vidiots podcast. It's a conversational podcast where we take some questions from you at home and obey the laws of the three us, where everybody brings a, a thing along to, to talk, talk about. about. I'm Ben. I'm Peter. I'm Michael. Well done, everyone. Come on, Kevin. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, Jesus, Kevin. What, what the fuck was that? <laughs> I thought he said, I'm kidding. And I'm kidding. No, God, I didn't even realise Kevin came into the room there. So is, he, is he back in his hall now? It sounds like he's um, settled in yeah. quite well. Is it the just first sort of time loomed. Kevin has spoken? Other than when he I opens his so. mouth and the intro and outro music. Just it's the first time yeah. he's ever actually spoken. That's why his voice is so gruff. Oh, God. I not. suppose it makes sense, doesn't it, that he's here because we just heard the intro music. But I'd still, I wasn't prepared. I wasn't <laughs> able to sort of echolocate where he was. He just sort of distended his, his neck like a giraffe, oh. like a big old giraffe. And uh, craned it round and just spoke over my shoulder. It scared the crap out of me. God, he's a ter- he's a terrifying beast. When you hear the intro music, you don't always know. You know, is that is that just coming through on on Michael or Ben's audio, or is he in the room with me, or is it that loud that everyone on planet Earth can hear him at the same time? Yeah. It's not yeah. actually. Well, you guys heard him, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah clear as day. Yeah, and he wasn't even coming through the microphone. That was just everybody on planet Earth heard that in their heads at the same time. That's what happens when people are listening to the podcast. We don't actually embed the music's not embedded in the file at all. You can just yeah. hear Kevin somewhere <laughs> in the world, just conveniently at the right moment. So yeah, every time you hear that, he just screams at a certain level that is audible oh to your country. Yeah. So yeah, that's it. The special Kevin frequency. Oh God. His neighbors hate him. Planes fall out of the sky. It's quite horrifying. Really. It's like one of those those weird espionage radio channels that just broadcast numbers. Have you heard of those? Oh, yeah, oh, number yeah. stations. Yeah, number stations. I love them. Yeah, yeah. Like sleeper agents. You never know what you're going to do. But what you might do is consider donating to Podiets. Oh. oh. <laughs> like these fine people did. If you go to streamlabs.com forward slash Vidiots official, yeah, that's right. It's the same thing we use when we stream if you want to donate during a stream. But if you fancy supporting the show monetarily, and I know we don't stream that often, then you can do, as these amazing people don't did. say that. Joseph. What? We stream when we can. Ben. I know, but we don't stream very often. No. So no. they don't get many opportunities to donate when we stream. That's my point. I see. Oh. So these, are, these fine people have taken it upon themselves to donate to us in the past sort of week or so. That's Joseph, Sam, Nathaniel Barlam, E. Spurious, Milton Holmes, Katie Kins W. 17, Cecil oh, Prumps, yes. Lord Brotovich, Sorry, Jacket sorry. 29. Can we go back? Was that Cecil Prumps? Yes. Cecil Prumps. <laughs> so regular, yes! regular triple so, jump. Uh... She's, she's a moderator on triple jump. That is an incredible name. I love it. It's spelled it's good, S-E-S-S-A-L as well. Jesus, it's got everything. Yeah. Cecil Pramps. Jean, Jean Jacket 29. Sim 02 and Drawn by Justin. Wow, Thank you so much, you generous, people. generous people for donating. And if you'd like to donate, please do go to streamlabs.com forward slash video. It's official and we'll give you a shout out on the next podcast. Yeah, boy. Thank you, everyone. I like that we've given up on the bit.ly link. It's too complex. It's stupid. It's it needs capital letters. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. The fact that the, the lowercase one takes you to a completely irrelevant site. Is dangerous. 
Although I, I imagine most people would, would realise that they went to the wrong place if they entered it like that. But anyway, yeah. let's kick things off with a question. Peter, yes. I believe you're question boy. I am question boy today. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> today, Matthew, I am question boy. So Nick Tullett, uh, it's with two T's on the end, so I don't think it's pronounced Nick Tullet. Uh At Nick underscore Tullett has asked... If you could appear on any game show, which would it be? And enclosed in this tweet is a photo of the TV. I don't know if it's Nick's TV or if he's just found this photo online of someone watching Bradley Walsh's The Chase. And the question on screen is a media sensation in the 1930s. What creature was Jeff who was said to live at a farmhouse on the Isle of Man? Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's multiple choice. Uh, is it A, a singing spider? B, a talking mongoose, or C, a yodeling beaver. The person who has answered this question on the show went with singing spider. Idiot! Oh, what a fool! Idiot! Should have listened to Poddy. Everyone knows that spiders lack the 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 voice box to to sing. Yeah, whereas mong mongoose can definitely talk. Yeah, as we know, it's well documented. Yeah. Can we can we go back to the beginning there? That did it say media sensation, Jeff the Mongoose? A media sensation in the 1930s. What creature wow. was Jeff who was said to live in a farmhouse on the Isle of Man? I love that. Big lad. Proud of him. Big I like lad. how it doesn't specify that he was a sort of kind of a ghost or something living in the walls. It just implies that he just had a farmhouse on the Isle of Man. Yeah. Just lived there. <laughs> hey, I'm Jeff. Would you like to buy some milk? Jeff's place is what it says on the outside. Yeah. <laughs> And there aren't actually any rooms. There are just really, they're just really wide wall partitions. Mm -hmm. Oh, and that's how he gets around because he doesn't. He lives in the walls. <laughs> yeah, and I have hands and I have feet. I am a freak. What game show would you like to appear on? God. If it could be any game show in the world, hmm. get your own back. God. Oh, well, man. are we counting kids' game shows? No, here, I think or we just... probably shouldn't because there's lots of kids' game shows I'd love to appear on. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I was watching one recently, a clip. I can't remember how I got onto it on YouTube, but um, it was Neil Buchanan of Art Attack fame mm -hmm. um, briefly had a show on CITV called Finders Keepers where the set would be like this big... Well, it wasn't that big. It was like a house. <laughs> it was like a doll's house that had been opened up so you could yeah. see into like various rooms. Um, it had two okay. stories. And uh, the, the two kid contestants had to go into different rooms in the house. He would read them a cryptic clue like, Oh, fly me in the day and hold on tight. Uh, I'm great fun to fly because I am a kite. And then Thank they go you, running off. Yeah. And they would have to turn the room upside down. And it was absolutely full of junk. They would have to throw everything off the shelves. It looked really fun. They were just able to like, they were just allowed to smash up a room for 30 seconds. Um, and they had oh, to find man. the kite in the room. So good. I've always yeah. wanted to smash up a car. Is there a game show where I get to smash up a car? Um, yes. There must be. Scrap I Heap Challenge? That confidently. Yeah, Scrap Heap Channel. Oh, God, it's not a game oh, show. Not really. Well, awesome. it's kind of, if, if it was in a studio, you would consider it a game show. But just because yeah. it's in a junkyard, it's not a game show. I think it's Scrap Heap Challenge. Was, oh, man, it was so good. Bit of a tan tangential tangerine. Mm. But I tell you one kid's game show that used to make me furious. Yeah. Just because I hated it and I didn't think it was very good and it was always on when, when I wanted to watch cartoons. 50-50. 50 fucking 50. Yeah, oh, it was so <laughs> bad. Fuck that show. I hate that show. Yeah. It's bullshit. <laughs> Dave was on it. Best friend of the show, Dave. Benson Phillips. <laughs> was Best he? friend. Was he not? I thought Dave hosted it. I'm sure. No, I'm sure. No, it did. was it was uh, Sally Gray. She was called, and I think another oh, woman I did it Dave as well. Benson Phillips was on it. I fucking hate hated that. It was educational. Yeah, it wasn't oh. funny or entertaining. The whole school went and was in the audience, and like yeah. you only most of the kids didn't get to play a game. My school never fucking yeah. went. God, I've forgotten about that. I'm glad. Like I remember vividly not liking it as a kid either. I didn't yeah. know this was like a, a, a broad thing. And there was a, a trivia bit where, like the the man, I think he was called Flynn, the sort of voice from above, would ask questions to kids God, in the it audience. Was Flynn, how do you? Why do you have an encyclopedic <laughs> knowledge of the most obscure? I'm looking at the Wikipedia page now. It is Flynn. What yeah. the fuck? It's He's Flynn. an oval-shaped screen voiceover in the background. Oh God, yeah. Oh, is he the screen? I just thought he was a man in a in a sound room, in, like in no. a gallery. He's the uh, screen, was he? Flynn is the man inside the oval-shaped screen 
suit. Wow. So Flynn would ask, he would go like, number 22. And then a spotlight would fall on number tw- the kid with 22 on their shirt. And he would ask some stupid question for a primary school age kid. Like, which of these is not a planet? Jupiter, Mars, or the sun? And the the whole thing was... No conferring. So if if anyone whispered, and they, I think they were all mic'd up or something, and <laughs> oh my if, God. if any of them whispered to each other and tried to give the the answer to number 22, who didn't realise that the sun wasn't a planet, this weird noise would play. It would go like... Ding, 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 and, he, and then Flynn would go, conferring! <laughs> like that. It's very 1984, Jesus isn't it? Christ. Yeah. God. Big brother, Big Flynn is watching. <laughs> Big <God>. Flynn. <laughs> um, I'm looking at the hosts. You're right. For some reason, I had it in my mind. Maybe it's just a sort of retroactive thing where I just assigned Dave Benson Phillips <laughs> to shit shows yeah. that, I didn't, that yeah. I didn't like. It was Sally Gray and then um, Angelica Bell. Oh. And then the final presenter was former Precious singer Sophie McDonald. Oh, and wow. And if you've never heard of Precious, Precious were a British girl group consisting of Louise Rose, Anya Lahiri, Sophie McDonald, Callie Clark Sternberg and Jenny Frost. They first achieved fame as the UK's entry for the Eurovision Song oh, Contest God. and went on to become a moderately popular act oh, <laughs> until wow. the group disbanded in two, 2000. This was five years later oh, she God. landed this gig and God. is still credited as former Precious singer. <laughs> Uh, to That's be awesome. fair, moderate, moderate success for a Euro- Eurovision act is incredible. True. To be remembered yeah, no, more than true. a day afterwards is a real feat. Fucking Eurovision. Anyway, sorry, what was the question? Uh, what game show uh, will we go on? Maybe I, 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 Supermarket I Sweep. Oh, fucking yes. Supermarket Sweep. Dale Winton. Oh, absolutely. Never watched a full episode. I really do not find game shows that interesting and I never truly watch them. Mm-hmm. But Supermarket Sweep sounds good. Dale Winton's dead now, isn't he? Yeah, yes, a rip. Oh, God, rip. I, I'd go on it to bring him back. I'd for one night only. <laughs> Fucking De- Dale Winton's exhumed corpse hosting <laughs> Michael's Just propped up in a shopping trolley. Show. <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what game show I'd want to go on. The yeah. Cube. Oh, oh, it was so good. I, it's I only really... balancing on a stick, but can you handle it in the, the cube? cube? Let's go to the cube. Let's go to the cube. <laughs> that was a thing Peter and I used to say to each other a lot yeah. <laughs> when we were at What Culture. Um, for some reason, whenever we needed to have a meeting for the gaming channel or, or talk about worst games or, or defecting whatever, from the company or defecting <laughs> from the company, oh, a lot of those we would meetings. just I'd just lean over to him or he'd lean over to me and we'd just go, um, let's go to the cube. Let's uh, go to the cube. Well, let's, uh, let's go to the cube. <laughs> and it would just be the just the studio usually because it's square. Yeah. Do you remember studio. when there was um, toenail clippings all over the floor of that studio? Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> Who gate. trimmed their toenails in the studio? Oh, Own up now. Please, I want to know. <laughs> Disgusting. It was fucking one of yours. I'd maybe... <laughs> In the same way that uh, Michael would go on Supermarket Sweep to bring back Dale Winton from the dead, <laughs> um, I would maybe go on something like... I don't even mind which fucking show but just like the generation game or something to bring back um michael barrymore from his dead career i loved michael barrymore and then just because some guy died in his pool oh god totally totally selfish prick selfish dead guy in his pool now michael barrymore has no career and he briefly did well on celebrity big brother and then sort of faded into obscurity again that's a good idea if you want to uh, ruin someone's career just die in the pool yeah the ultimate he, uh, fuck you. he used to do a show, I think it was an American import, that was called Kids Say the Funniest Things. And they would oh, just wow. have three kids sitting on a stage and he would go and chat to them. And they he would just somehow manage to get the just the best material out of all of these like five-year-old children by asking them a question, you know? It was really oh. good. It's hard to kind of describe it, but uh, I'm sure there's clips on YouTube. The American version of that show is less fun now. It was hosted by Bill Crosby, so it's... Ooh. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Bill Co- Oh, no. No. Yeah. That's not great. Um, would uh, would I Lie to You count as a game show? Because I think that's fun. Oh, yeah, it's a panel fun. show. One. You kind of have to be yeah, a celebrity. Yeah, I suppose it's a panel show, isn't it? It's, yeah. fun. it's a fun show. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, we've given our answers. I think that's that's good all round there. That's strong. We have. That was a, a very oh, strong, oh. yeah, S- strong set of answers there. Strong. Mm-hmm. Um, do you want a second question before we go into a thing? Oh, yeah. Let's, let's fucking do it. Yeah. Okay. So, generally speaking, we don't necessarily want like just generic video game related uh, questions. Like, what's your favorite game? What's your favorite game character? 
This one like slightly intrigued me because I genuinely don't know what you, your answers would be. But what is your? F- uh, this is from Bjorn Q at Bjorn Q. What's your favourite video game ending ever? Oh God! I think mm. that's that's specific enough that I I would like to hear your answers personally. This is okay. while I rapidly try and remember all the games I've played as my all the games brain you've ever played. Blank. Open your Steam library. Yep, literally just yeah. done that. <laughs> God. I would also, as as I would like to repeat the sentiment Peter said there, we're not really a video game show. We do get a lot of video game questions every yeah. time we ask for questions. So to, do try to not ask those if you can. Mm. But you're right. This isn't... This is a, it's something it's we, I don't think we've it's specifically podcast. talked about before. Yeah, it's the bullshit podcast. Try and ask bullshit questions next time. Um, yeah. Ask something stupid. <laughs> yeah, come on. Yeah, sure. Um, I think, like, for, I mean, maybe I should go first. I've yeah. I liked the ending to um, Halo One and Halo Three. They were kind of similar to each other. The ending to Halo Two was dreadful. It looked like there was going to be one more one more level, and then it just ended. And it's like, oh, but great! What about the finale? He sort of implied that, like, here I go for the final fight, and then oh no, that's that's the credits there. Um, but also, I thought the final, not necessarily the the ending, like the final cutscene, but the final boss of um portal 2 i thought was super fun yes. oh yeah when the, we get to go to the moon yeah you're getting like completely you know beaten up you've learned from cave johnson in the basement that uh portal surfaces are made of moon dust and you kind of think that's probably just a bit of a throwaway <laughs> remark that like okay well it's made of moon dust fine and then you know it looks like it's all over then the ceiling crumbles and you just see the moon <laughs> and you're like oh shit <laughs> i know uh, what are i've got to doing do. this yeah it was that wow. moment of like, really? Is are we gonna do this? And I love how you fire the portal somewhere on the moon and conveniently it lands exactly where the flag and moon buggy are on the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody good shot. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, I'd really love the ending of Portal 2. Um I think I'm not the kind of person who plays games a lot anyway, or even yeah. completes them for that matter. But Supio, uh, Supio, Jesus, Super Mario Odyssey is from start to finish one of the most joyous gaming experiences I've ever had. Oh. And the finale with uh, it was a jump up superstar, like it's a big firework show. You're just running through a level. It's really good, really joyous, and it wrapped the game up so well. Oh, oh. That was a very, very very good bit of that game yeah i'm not even a mario fan and i played that and thought this is this is really nice it's just nice yeah i like it yeah ben um god i mean i'm sure there are loads that i'll think about afterwards yeah. like, I, I really like that one obviously that it's very impactful at the ending of i suppose if you can call it the ending of uh, the original pokemon games where you've finished the the pokemon league and all your all your party get inducted into the Hall of Fame, uh-huh. and the music, na 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 na, and all your your best boys and girls are scrolling past. That's cool. Uh, the suicide mission from the end of Mass Effect Two oh, yeah. is really that's a very powerful one. Um, what else? I mean, if we're thinking recently, God of War has sort of two endings, and at the end of the story, there are various secrets and revelations revealed that are like oh that's that's cool i like that and then there's sort of a post credit scene if you go back to his house in the open world and it teases and sets up the next game and that's really cool as well yeah, and pumped. uh so yeah those those are those are two that's a recent example but... obviously the last of us as well can't really talk about endings oh, without the yeah. last of us oh i did i got punch that one i didn't like the ending of the last of us I, oh, really? it really kind of annoyed me i mean yeah it's not exactly a, a you know a <laughs> a heartwarming wrap up. Yeah, it might it might be intended to annoy you. It's thought provoking. Yeah. Just I think. me expli- explicitly. Yeah. By that yard it's stick, I think it's it's a good yeah, it's powerful. Yeah, it's good uh, yeah, yeah. Also, um I've just thought Tone B two, slightly obscure game, but that uh has the most that is a very sort of heartwarming. Everyone's all happy. They all in the final cutscene is they're all like just having dinner together in someone's house and there's like this happy, almost sickeningly charming music playing. And then when the credits run, it plays this really bittersweet, almost like, Yay, we did it, but I'm kind of sad that the game's over, like really happy music. And in the background of the credits, it just runs like a highlight reel of like all the best moments of the the gameplay throughout. Oh, God. Um, And you're like, oh, yeah, I remember doing that. Oh, yeah, I did that too. I did that. Yeah, go me. And that was just a nice, you know, it was like treacle or something. Just, 
this is almost making me a little bit sick. It's too nice. <laughs> you did good, kid. Yeah. On the topic of endings, uh, I'm not even going to go video games here, but there's like, if for some reason in like kids and family films, they usually seem to end in like a dance party. And it's the worst fucking thing. Like, I remember watching Night at the Museum as a kid, and for some reason that film ends with the entire museum having a whole big party. And it's like, what the fuck kind of ending is that? Why? Yeah. It's just so nothing Ian. Ugh. I don't know why I'm getting annoyed at uh, Night at the Museum. It's it's not a film worth any critical acc- acclaim, but well, it annoys yeah. me to this day. Yeah, I was about to say um, George of the Jungle ends in a similar way. <laughs> God but sake, again, guys. not exactly critically acclaimed. Guys. Yeah. I got a thing. Yeah. Oh. oh. You want to hear it? Thing Bust me. It out. So this is this is weird news, but it's real news. Have you got the right exists. podcast, Ben? No, no. I, I promise you, it's not gaming related. Weird Ooh. news. Gay hell. What? Oh no. U.S. town renamed to protest LGBT flag ban. Oh. This is from BBC News. This is from the 18th of June. Welcome to Gay Hell, Michigan, a tiny town with a new name and a new owner. YouTuber Elijah Daniel, 25, is making waves on social media this week after announcing that he's buying the small American town Hell and renaming it for Pride Month. (laughs) Pride Month celebrates the global LGBTQ plus community with a series of events and parades held annually throughout the month of June. Calling the town Gay Hell is a protest against US President Donald Trump's ban on American embassies flying the rainbow flag, Mr. Daniel told BBC News. Known for his stunts, Mr. Daniel said his latest actions aim to trick his young audience, mostly 15 to 24 year olds, into paying attention to politics. The idea is they click my tweet and then they see the news behind it. It's the way I get my audience interested, he explained. To be fair, that's what I, I had no idea that Trump had what, banned flying any pride flags. No, I didn't uh, know that. Yeah, embassies, yeah. Oh, what the fuck? The US embassies. Wow. Apparently so. Oh, well. There we are. Hell, which is about 60 miles from Detroit, has turned oh. itself into a tourist destination by capitalising on its unusual name. In the town, you can buy the right to be mayor for the day, a wedding chapel is available for couples who want to get married in hell, and visitors can visit hell, the Hell Hole Bar and Hell Saloon. Oh, wow. In 2017, Elijah Daniel made headlines when he became Hell's mayor and announced he would ban heterosexuals from the town. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> um, yeah, it continues like that. But basically, the previous owner of Hell was trying to sell it. Okay. And, what the and fuck? so Elijah Daniel has bought Hell and it's now called Gay Hell. Does it say how much uh, he bought the- it for? That's incredible. Yes, uh, Hell's owner has been trying to sell for a while, but according to Mr. Daniel, he wants to pass it on to someone who will carry on the tradition. Hell's owner. The asking <laughs> price is around $1 million, $1 million or £800,000. Wow. Mr. Daniel says he will soon finalise his purchase of the town, at which point Hell's new name will be made permanent. God, amazing. What a great so, place America is. Yeah, I just, I just thought that was, that was really weird. That is weird. On the topic of Hell... Claudia visited a cave system in the UK recently called the Devil's Arsehole. Oh. Uh, yeah, it's lovely. It really cool, but it's just another the most delightful name. That's in Thor Ragnarok. Was that when she went to the Dales? Yeah, yeah, she went to, well, um, fucking, oh, what's the theme park called? Alton Towers. Oh. And she visited Is that the, the one we went to? No, it wasn't, was it? No, we went was to Thor Park. We oh, went okay. to the, the less well known one. <laughs> yeah. Yes. But still as good. Yeah. People, people lose their legs at Alton Towers. Mm. People lose their legs on all Merlin uh, theme parks, don't they? That's, that's, that's the thing. part of the USP. I think enough USP. time has passed now where we can talk about this again because we did openly talk about Merlin theme parks and their reputation for having legs amputated yeah. openly on yeah. this podcast. Yeah. And then literally in the following week were invited by Thought Park to visit their park. Some people would call that defamation, but... Oh. Yeah, I'm still not sure if they knew that we did that. <laughs> no, it's been, but we've yeah. kept quiet about it for a while. It's someone, someone just sort of tweeted Thought Park saying, "I don't think they really said exactly why we'd mentioned them in the podcast, but I think they just no, sort they of had said a dream that they went there with you." Right? Oh, that was it. So we yeah. talked about it, and then someone had a dream because we talked about it, and just because they tweeted saying, "I dreamt that Peter went to Thought Park with me." We got invited to Thought Park. What they didn't know is the reason the person had that dream is because we've been talking about how when you go to Thought Park, you get your legs off. <laughs> yes. But the rides are so shoddy, you will lose your legs. Yeah. I totally forgot about that. Jesus. Yeah, it's kind of mad, isn't it? Yeah. But that's hell. 
And so's this. Welcome to Gay Hell. You can visit it if you're near Michigan. Oh. Incredible. I, if, if I, I really want to go to Detroit now. It's, it, it seems like a fun... Well, fun isn't the word to use. It's a very disparaged place and there's a lot of problems there. But it seems like visually very interesting. It seems like a city. It definitely is. It exists. Oh, ground and hell. Mm. Why not? It's only 50 miles from hell. Gay <laughs> hell, sorry. It's only 50 miles from gay hell. Yeah, thank you. I love that someone's trying to sell hell. <laughs> yes. I've had enough. I've been the owner of hell for so long. The fact that you can buy a town in America is also kind of mad. Yeah, that's me. that's kind of insane. You can buy the mayorship of it. You can get married. Well, I mean, it's not that weird <laughs> Whoa, that you can get, you married, get married, married in a town. <laughs> you Jesus. get married in a town in America. Oh, that's weird. I hope you're married. <laughs> but, you know, they're selling it in that kind of way that you, I got married in hell. All right, good for you. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Just calm it's down. It's like how I'm technically a lord. Technically. <laughs> yeah. Not I, And I was very nearly legally a lord as well. Wow. Because there's a place... In, there's a few places in Scotland where you can buy... I don't think we've spoken about this before. Yeah, where you, you can, can buy, a buy little... like a square foot of land yeah. on an estate and be sent a certificate saying that you... Giving you the deed for that land, basically, and saying that you are a lord. So I've got a certificate that says uh, Lord Benjamin Potter of Glencoe. And it can be used legally. I got all the paperwork to get my driving license changed to be <laughs> Lord Potter... Uh, like my bank account details and everything, and it sat on my desk for like six months, and then I sort of gave up. Uh, but I did get my rail card. <laughs> they didn't want oh, any proof. Wow. They just let me put Lord on it. So wow, that's a fun one. That was worth. I think it. Amy's dad has done the same thing. I think he might be a Lord. It's <laughs> great. I suggest everybody do it. We can all be Lords or uh, Lairds, which I think is fun. But Ben, the... when everyone's a Lord, exactly. no one will be. Well, you say that, but. We'll see how many people can be asked to sort out the paperwork. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if everyone's a lord, then I, on the paperwork it says I'm a lord. It doesn't make a difference if everyone else is one. I'm still yeah. a goddamn lord. True. Yeah. Yeah. I am lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, ben and Michael. <coughs> oh, Peter! Peter! I've got a question here from Miles? Question mark. Oh. My- Miles? Um, is it though? At... At Chubnub underscore. Oh, quality, <laughs> quality. Uh, ben and Michael. Is that a Star Wars? No. Chubnub wobbity do a do. <laughs> no, it's not. Uh, okay. Ben and Michael, where do we go when we die? Don't oh. say don't say hell. Gay hell. <laughs> Gay hell. Gay hell. <laughs> Gay hell. <laughs> what do you guys think happens when you die? You uh, you wake up and uh, you look around you and there's loads of school kids. What? And it turns turns out you're on 50-50. Oh, God. <laughs> and you're Flynn just doomed. Just shouting at you. You're doomed to be on 50-50 for the rest of your pathetic life. Conferring! <sighs> Imagine like how it. fucked up it'd be if, like, reincar- reincarnation existed, but you only get one full life, and every time after that, you just sprang into an existence where you're about to die. Like, oh, Jesus. Like, so after this life, you die, and then you reincarnated in the past as Hitler's dog moments before he gets shot. Oh, God. <laughs> so it's like a sort of high score basis. So depending on how long you survive in one life, that's the quality of your next life. Yeah, let's go for so that. it's just diminishing returns. It's just based <laughs> it's on how long you survive, not not how good the, not how well you live your life, you know. Exactly. You don't get rewarded yeah. for being a good person, you just get rewarded for living long. There we go. Mm-hmm. Big life. Yeah. <laughs> Where do you guys think you go when you die? Uh, um, I, I know I'd want to go, but... <laughs> where, what's your idea of heaven, Mikey? Oh, that's, that's a big old question, actually. Thought Park, but you don't lose a leg. Oh, oh, see, that amazing. sounds pretty good, yeah. because you're going to lose a leg if you go to <laughs> Thought Park. <laughs> to be fair, when we went to Thought Park, it was kind of like heaven. We got to skip all the queues, we yeah. were escorted really around, we, met, we held up a ride full of children so we could oh get a God, shot with Billy Ray Walrus. So awkward. Yes. That was the awkwardest de- part of that day. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, God. I, uh, it's, I think it would just have, be having a shit ton of money, really. <laughs> just be healthy. Just like normal life, but just without <laughs> just any got, of the bullshit. Got money and I'm healthy. Yeah, that sounds That's like heaven. heaven to me. Fucking yeah. Ugh. I tell you. Also, I, thank you to James. Very quickly, thank you to James for yeah. inviting us. And yeah, thank you, James. Thought Park. Very much. Right. We had if a he's great listening, time. he looked after us very well as well. Didn't he, he did. Very good. He man. held up an entire ride of children, as Michael said. <laughs> yeah, for <laughs> us yeah. to get a photo with a toy. Oh, God. <laughs> um, my my idea of 
like the wor- I think the worst thing that could happen. Um, well, no, this isn't the, the worst. Uh, when you when you die, I mean. Okay. The worst thing that could happen, I've I've realised, is not what I was going to say. The worst thing that could happen is like in the Doctor Who episode where it turns out people are still sort of conscious and can feel everything, but oh. they're dead. And they've got like recordings, like spirit recordings of all these corpses saying, please don't cremate me, please don't cremate me, which sounds Jesus horrible. Christ. <laughs> but what I, was, what I was going to say was, to me, the idea of being reincarnated and just it being a complete... You've got the same chance of being born as anyone in the entire world. Uh, that that that's horrible because we're very fortunate people, yeah. and I would, you know, no no one should unfortunately have to live the way that some people live in in the world. And statistically, you yep. <laughs> you'd live a lot more of those lives if you kept being born again and again and again. So I sort of hope for everyone's sake that number one we can sort out poverty so that if we are going to be reincarnated, we'll all have a good time. But but number two, if we can't sort out poverty, I hope no one ever has to come back again because statistically, you're going to have a shit time. <laughs> it's it's okay, Peter. I hear most of them have phones now. Yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they better. They better. If they, oh, fuck. That's if a throwback. Got phones, <laughs> how uh. can, but hang on, Ben. If they've got phones, how come they don't have a house? <laughs> Well, that's the thing. I don't um, understand. They're special, they're special phones. Right. That you press it, there's an app, and it just sort of explodes a big tent. It's like an airbag. It's, right. it's um, fueled by copper coins. You just put them in, you get a bit of credit. Yeah. Yeah, but you have to carry them in your buttocks first. Right, Peter? <laughs> no, you, you only carry silver coins. Your special your bottom purse. <laughs> co- co- we're not, we don't play the 1P game. We don't, we don't carry coppers. Although a 2P would be big enough. But I guess if you got um, reborn as a poor person, you could play the two B two P game quite a lot. You could That'd be a good you source could. of entertainment, yeah. cheap and fun. If someone gave you twenty, if you if in a days of be- a day of begging you got twenty five two P coins, you could play the fifty P game. <laughs> <laughs> Just put them all in there. <laughs> that's, that's some fucking risky stuff. You could you could legitimately lose half of your actual worldly possessions. Up up your bottom. <laughs> They'd be safe. They'd be very yeah, safe. they would. Yeah. You might get some kind of poisoning, though. I uh, wouldn't, yeah. God. I, have you ever put a 2P in your mouth? Uh, well, yeah, when no, I was younger, I, can't say, I think. I can't <laughs> say that. I, I know what they taste like, but I, I can't say I've, I've masticated a, a, a penny. No one's yeah, masticated them. Michael. Oh, so maybe once. <laughs> okay. I, it was in there for too long, but yeah, that was that, it had a kind of lingering, stingy flavour. Michael, that might have been up my <laughs> my granddad's bum. At some point, oh, ten no. years ago, yeah. like before we even knew each other, I'd, I'd, that's how we crossed paths. Yeah. I recommend, if, if people are going to put coins in their mouths, just steer clear of the 50p's, because it might literally <laughs> have been between my cheeks at some point. Oh, gee. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you've, I'm fucking dying here, Jesus. Yeah, me too. God. Oh. That, that, that oh. good. <laughs> Have we all described hell? Yeah, yeah that was, that I think was hell. Wherever Something... the fifty p goes, I think is as yeah. close to hell as you're going to get to. We weren't even describing hell. It was where you go when you die. That says a lot about me, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, let's go straight to hell. Uh, we don't know. No one knows Miles. That's why you've got a question mark after the end of your name. Miles. Ma- Miles. Um, I've got a thing. If you want a thing. Oh, lay have on you? Me. It's actually a fairly serious topic of discussion. Oh dear. Oh, oh fucking oh. great. Just after the talk of shoving 25 two peas down our ass cracks. Yeah, it's going to feel very... Swipers. It's going to be very dry after oh. that. Oh, but unlike the, the two P coins, they're probably <laughs> rather no. moist. Stop it. No, stop now. Um, so on Twitter recently... Well, no, not on Twitter. In my email inbox, I got a little... Uh, one of those oh. without the slam noise. Hang on. Wait. <laughs> there you go. A little ding. In it came <sighs> an email. It's from the Twitter Corporation. Oh. And I was what like, does oh. Mr. Corporation want? Well, I thought, that's so unusual. You don't normally get emails from Twitter. I'm unsubscribed from all the all the junky ones. So what's this? Uh, I have received from Twitter a DMC, whatever the letters are, <gasps> takedown notice. No way! So... I think it's DVLA. A D- yeah, uh, yeah, you're right. It's, oh, it's uh, Run DMC. A, a yes. DAB ah, sorry, digital no, takedown notice I've received. 
Yeah. Um, which was news to me. You know, obviously I've had them from, from the tubes, the YouTubes before. Um, but uh, apparently Twitter I, I, yeah. now take down certain copyright ID'd material. So oh, fuck. Mad. I was like, oh, what's this? So I clicked on it. And uh, they said such and such a company. It's like a always a company that sounds. It's it's not the label of the song that you've used, and you're like yeah. baffled as to how they're able to take it down. But anyway, this company uh, has requested that we remove this video from your from your Twitter backlog. And it was Michael. Do you remember when I did your? Nah. noise but to the tune of Childish Gambino I was just thinking about that the other day I was going to put that on the video's YouTube channel well that Best one not. is still live oh good uh, but also a little later a few months after that I did a, a yee version you know the the yee dinosaur oh my god yee and it goes <laughs> bom, 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 bom. and then it says yee at the end <laughs> and uh, in this email, not only was it telling me that my my video was being taken down, but also they'd attached a copy of the legal letter that had been served to Twitter saying, you need to make sure your users uh, have these videos taken off their account. And it just had a list of like 12 of us and just <laughs> named and shamed all these other people who had all used the Childish Gambino song, whatever it's what? called. That doesn't seem right. Yeah, that's the You really have access bizarre. to that? No. So that's all just public to me. I I, I am uh, aware of other people who broke the law in the same way. And yeah, the video's just been taken down now as far as... I mean, I've not even bothered checking, but it said it was going to be. It, so wow, uh, that's apparently awful. Twitter's doing that now. That sucks. I never knew that Twitter did that that's got to be a new thing right because we've posted i mean people just people just use twitter like that all the time just yeah. uploading any old crap just because there's no monetization so nobody's losing anything yeah well this is this is why i this is one of the reasons why i love twitter so much now is that like all these like stupid little ideas where it's michael just going Mah! but to the tune of whatever you know things like that you can't put those on YouTube because even if you just use the backing track and the vocals have been isolated, it even recognises just in- instrumental tracks now and stuff like that. Oh, but hell. if I want to just make a, a, a stupid video that's like 10 seconds long but happens to have a, a song in it, I can just throw it on Twitter and it's it's fun and we all get to enjoy it for a day and then everyone forgets about it. Fine, yeah. let's move on. Twitter's a blessing like that because you can just like make and share a little short form content so well. It is really fun and... God, I not hope it doesn't anymore. continue that way because it's not like Twitter's not exactly monetizable in a normal way like no. YouTube. So I thought these issues wouldn't really matter. Yeah. No. So be warned, pirates. Ye be warned. That's such a shame. And it's especially mm. weird as well that you. <laughs> it's almost like a data breach, isn't it? That you've you've got <laughs> these other people's information. Yeah. Yeah. Genuinely. As well, that have broken the same rules that you have. I'm just going to open. I'm going to see if I still have it. I might have even. I don't know if I would have deleted it. Let's read them out. Just yeah. read them out. Yeah. Name and shame them. I wonder if we'll get a DMCA takedown notice from Sto- the city of Stoke-on-Trent. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> For defaming their good name. Fidiots versus the, the, people the of city Stoke. of Stoke-on-Trent. <laughs> uh, yeah, here we go. Um, at Mako the King 7 at CB McGrath 24 <laughs> At hi Steve sixty nine. Hi Steve. Nice. All these people. It's all the same song. Glover, Glover. It's composed by Glover Lee. Glover Lie. Redbone. Donald. Donald Glover. And oh, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Donald. Yeah, Donald Glover. I forgot. It's Don- him, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. wow. So, uh, Rick. Oh, that's, that's all, a very those... sad tale, actually. Yeah. Oh well. Hopefully, we can continue to post shit on Twitter. Um, you remember when? You and I had sort of a back and forth competition a few, God, it would have been a couple of years ago now, where we just kept posting sale sale (laughs) to each other, but just changing it to words that rhyme with sale and then making a video to go along with it and just wasting company time. I do remember that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, because when I got this email, it made me go through, I went into the media tab and just sort of scrolled down to, all the fun, stupid videos I've made, and I was like, might just, might just back these up now, just in case. And I saw oh, all the yeah. sale ones; they were good. Oh, did you ever do one that said quail? 
Yeah, Ben did quail. Oh, good, good. Did I? I can't even remember them now. I wouldn't have remembered them, but I did go back and, and watch them. <laughs> freshly, did you? Freshly refreshed. Yeah, I've, so I've archived them all. Well, I don't know if I've got them all, but some of them. I remember doing flail. You did and flail. It was just in a medieval... It started because I just I just did snail out of the blue. I just, I just one day I woke up in the morning and I thought, let's do a thing where like the camera pan, pans across a field as it's going do 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 do, and then at the last minute it's just snail, and then that's the end of the video. And then uh, Ben suddenly did one in return and just snowballed yeah. out. Of it didn't go anywhere near as long as I was hoping that. I even added a folder to my favourites on Windows Explorer called Sail. <laughs> and it had all the assets in it, so I was ready. I was oh. always ready every day to make one. We did and, like. Uh, I think you left my last one unanswered, actually, and that was it. Oh, oh. really? Oh. That's, yeah. Oh, this just gets sadder and sadder. I know. Well, it's because we. I think it's because we started to deviate. Like we were doing rhyming words, and then I did one where it panned across Shrek's swamp up to his door, his like <laughs> toilet door, and instead of sail, it just went somebody wants to. <laughs> And then that was the end. And then, breaking the format. And then your reply oh, to that, no. because I'd broken the, the rhyme rule, was it was the big, the head, the, the cromulon from uh, Rick and oh, Morty yeah. saying disqualified. Oh, man. And that was the end. I got disqualified. Oh, right. So that explains. So I killed it oh. because the rules were gone. I guess so. I don't was, know. It was lawless. Anyway, these are tweets that people will probably not be able to find yeah, that we're spending a lot of time We are about. talking a lot about these. Just scroll through <laughs> mine or Ben's media tab like a long way back. 2016 or 17? It'd be 17, like mid-2017. Yeah. Bloody yeah. hell. Okay. Yeah, that sounds about right. Let us know if you find it. <laughs> And we'll retweet it. Yeah, there you go. You do the work. The other thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, someone, you, 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 you're, you're too, it's someone, <laughs> someone, tweet it to us, our own thread, and then we'll just retweet it for everyone else. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank, you thank you in advance. Your, thank you for your discretion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, boys. Oh, yeah. yours. Yeah, yeah, us. <laughs> uh, in your opinion, z in brackets. In your opinions. What fictional character could do a better job as the President of the United States than Donald Flump, it says here? That's from... I thought we were uh, I thought we were we were leaving and we weren't gonna be your opinions anymore. <laughs> oh, 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 very good, very your, good. The Your Opinion Union. <laughs> That's from Ka Carrot Cake. Cat 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 oh, oh what a weird carrot cake. K A K A R R O T cake. That's uh, at Slim Wendigo. Hmm. Could you think of a good fictional someone who'd make a good president from from fiction? Oh, it's quite a specific question, but uh, the it, answer could be anything. Who's a good leader? Indiana Jones. He's a bit reckless. He wouldn't be interested, would no, he? No, he wouldn't. Yeah, he'd be too busy off adventuring, finding things. You need a, a man who's committed, who knows the business. Yeah. Or woman, or woman, or woman. God, be I careful, think... Michael. For the for the sheer God, what on earth would happen factor, mm. I'm going to go with a man, oh. and uh, I'm going to say the the dad from Fairly Odd Parents. Oh my <laughs> god, that would be Timmy's dad. Very interesting. I would. I just there are so many possibilities there, and I I cannot begin to list all the amazing things that that <laughs> wonderful, powerful leader could achieve. <laughs> Oh, wonderful, powerful leader. I think I'd go Big Bird from Sesame Street. Oh, <laughs> oh Jesus. I think, it, like, I what think would his be policies nice and, be? I, I don't know, but I think they'd be nice and neutral. Like, it's just strictly anti abortion. <laughs> Big Bird, <laughs> that's no! It. That's Please, the one policy. You are our guy. <laughs> All eggs are sacred. No, Big Bird, we don't work the same way as you. <laughs> oh, God, Big Bird, no. Don't do it. I'd I'd pick the bin one from Sesame Street. Oh yeah, he's lived at the bottom. He knows he knows what it's like to be on you know, you know the the bottom rung of the economy. Yeah, a real people's Oscar man. Oscar the bin one. Yeah, <laughs> the bin one? bin one. We have to get you out of here. <laughs> uh, no, I would. Uh, I just had someone in my head. Then I would pick. Um, it was also a kids kids TV character because of course it was. We're idiots. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Oh yeah, Mr. Ratburn and his new husband. Oh, oh that'd, that'd be, be very nice. sweet. Yeah, yeah. 
he's a man who's been in a position of authority already. I know he sets yeah. a lot of cruel homework, but presidents can't do that, so we'd be safe. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, as president, he could make that a possibility, so be careful. Oh my God, he could. <laughs> no, he That's could like make mandatory com- archery practice from the medieval days. Oh yeah. no, mandatory gear rat weddings for everyone. Oh no, <laughs> I don't want to ra- marry a rat man. <laughs> <laughs> it's the law now, son. <laughs> We've all got to do it. Now do your rat homework. Yeah, hand in your essay on <laughs> on the day I married a gay rat man. There's just going to be a load of weird rat rules, like no more beds, just like newspaper, all <laughs> big cut spinning up and wheels, stuff. straw. Everybody drinks out of those feeder things now, <laughs> attached to your bedroom window. Yeah, <laughs> everyone pisses on glass bottles in pub cellars and beer gardens, and then other people say to people when they're drinking from the bottles, "Don't do that. A rat might have pissed on it, and you'll go blind." Anyone ever said that to you? <laughs> no. No. That's the thing that people say. I've heard like, um, dog piss doing that. But I oh, think that okay. might actually. No, I think dog poo has the ability yeah, to make people blind. It has worms in it and stuff, I think, mm, that can good. blind a child. But yeah, if a, if a rat is like pissed on a bottle and you get rat piss in your mouth, that can blind you, apparently. It's like the weird sister of boppis, rat piss. Oh no, <laughs> rat piss. Maybe I wouldn't. Maybe I wouldn't have Mr. Ratburn as president. Maybe his husband, who's not a rat. There we go. Is he not? No, I've seen the episode because. Uh, what did I use it for? I used it for. Um, oh, it was a tweet. It was the worst games thing. Hmm. You know when we named all the children's characters in the most recent worst games ever. Yeah, all of the, all of them, every all of them, single every one. single one in the in the uh, too fast, too furious uh, game. And then yeah. uh, when I looked up the episode, turned out that their first dance is to the music from the Time Splitters disco level. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I remember. Yeah. I saw your tweet. That's so yeah. weird. Someone replied to me and said that that music itself is just a series of samples that are like royalty free that people have put together. Uh, so I guess oh, really? they both just got it from the same source. But wow. interesting. Yeah. Speaking of which, and I don't want to don't want to talk about games too much, obviously, mm-hmm. but. So, uh, my my friend Simon, um, Simon, he worked Simon. No, not as Simon. Right. Uh, he he works for BFBS. Um, do, like do, Brit- do 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 No, BFBS. British Forces Broadcasting something or other. I think something like that. Anyway, and he makes a lot of um, videos about uh, army personnel and armed forces and stuff like that. And he was looking for appropriate music for something. And I've always lauded Valiant Hearts: The Great War as having an incredible soundtrack. Right. It's, it's, you can just buy it. It's just music they bought from a website. Oh, God. Because he found it and then used it in one of his videos. And I was so disappointed <laughs> to find out that that amazing game with a, with a really touching, amazing soundtrack was just from a, you could just buy it and license it for any video. Oh, it's Harper not some sort of amazing, bummer. bespoke, composed, you know, no. award winning well, video game. It might have been, but then they just, you know, the artist then sold it on. I, I'm not mm. sure, but that was pretty, that was a bit of a bummer oh, finding that out. Rip, you. Ben's hopes and dreams. Yeah, all of them, gone. <laughs> Michael, is it time for my thing? I think so. Yes, oh. it is. Go. Would anybody like to hear about some accidents? <laughs> oh, I, I don't that. know. <laughs> <laughs> so I spent an hour today scrolling through the Wikipedia page full of accidents that have occurred on movie sets. Oh. Well, was, um, was work busy today? Um, oh, yeah. oh, I was absolutely stacked. You have no idea. Yeah, <laughs> yeah okay. so busy. Um, so, yeah, I, 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 movie sets are inherently very dangerous places, action films especially, like crashes, explosions, all this bullshit going on. So I thought I'd pick out some selected highlights dating all the way back to 1914. Ooh. No, I know. Actors are superstitious as well, right? There's all sorts of oh, acting yeah. curses and nonsense. Oh god, yeah. I know a film that had a lot of accidents, which you, I won't, you know, I won't go into what they were because it might be part of your thing. But uh, I'll, I'll call it now. Is the Wizard of Oz on there? Oh, it's not actually. Oh, a lot went wrong there. We'll talk about oh. it after. I'm the witch just... is actually melted. Fuck. Well, can... and yeah. the monkeys when they jumped out the window, they just fell. Yeah, their wings didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I was promised the monkey wings were real. <laughs> you literally threw me out of a twelve-story castle turret, and they just—they just didn't—they didn't inflate. 
Can you give me? Do you have any off the top of your head? You know, haven't done the Wizard of Oz. I'm yeah, the uh, you know when the Wicked Witch appears in Munchkinland, there's like just red smoke appears yeah. on the ground, and she's suddenly in it. Well, the way that they did that in um, back in back in the days of no CGI is there was just a a very narrow disc of floor that would come up and down like a lift, um, but it it moved really quickly. <laughs> And uh, apparently, like, the first time she did it, I think when she was going back in again when she left, uh, she, like, broke a bone or something uh, really badly. Or or I don't, I don't think she broke it because I think she got well enough to potentially be doing it again, do a retake. And she said, oh, I'm not going to do it. And uh, I think they got a, a sort of a double to do it. And when the double did it, they got injured too. Wow. Um, oh, also, the Tin Man... Um, was the second man cast to play the Tin Man because the first man had a horrible reaction to the silver paint on his body oh, and it left him like genuinely like fighting for his life for a time. Wow. Um, and I think some other things happened as well. Um, Holy shit. It's not just yeah. lead-based paint, it's just melted lead. <laughs> oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Molten hot. Mmm, delicious. <laughs> I'll look up what exactly what happened with the witch because I can't remember, but please, please go on. So the first one is Across the Border, filmed from 1914. Ooh. While on location in Canyon City, Colorado, cast member Grace McHugh was filming a scene where her character was crossing the Arkansas River on a boat when the boat suddenly capsized and camera operator Owen Carter immediately jumped in to save her. But it doesn't end here. Oh, when he jumped no. in to save her, he dragged her onto a sandbar that turned out to actually be quicksand. Oh, God. <sighs> God. The rest of the film crew watched helplessly as they were sucked into the quicksand and drowned. Oh my no, god. I didn't think quicksand actually worked like that. Apparently it does. It can do. Oh, man. Jesus. That's horrible. You think you're saving someone and end up giving them an even more painful death. Oh, that's well, the horrible. thing is, people float. She probably would have been fine. <laughs> yeah, you're not meant to move, are you, when you go in quicksand? Yeah, just, yeah you're yeah. just trying to lie on your back or something, I think. Oh, god. Um, my uh, my story, I've just realised, is actually a lot worse than I thought as well. Much like oh, yours God. just sounded like, oh, well, someone fell in. Hopefully they were okay. Um, it wasn't to do with the lift moving fast and someone breaking bones. It was that as the lift goes down and up and the smoke is there, uh, there's a big blaze of fire that comes out of the out of the oh, hole. God. And um, apparently Hamilton, that's the, the surname of the lady who played the witch, uh, Margaret, I think she was called. Mar- yeah, Margaret Hamilton. Margaret. She, uh, Margaret. <laughs> she suffered from second degree burns on her right hand and first oh, degree God. burns on the side of her face the Ooh. first time that they did this. And because of the burns, she had to heal for six weeks before returning to set. Um, and I'm sure I read somewhere that like um, that like a, a, a double did it as well and also, uh, Jesus. you know... Also got injured, but anyway. Oh dear. Yeah, let's hear about more people drowning in quicksand, Mike. Oh boy. Yeah, it, more quicksand. <laughs> this one's, I think, actually my favourite on the list. So this is about uh, the woman God for- forgot, a 1917 film. In one scene, extras were required to be thrown over the side of an Aztec pyramid. The quote-unquote pyramid was built out of wood and covered in paper on which sand had been glued on to create the appearance of stone. I don't like that. The extras were quote-unquote sandpapered as they slid down (gasps) the structure. Oh, no. The worst bit of this is, um, I'll continue, having expected such injuries, a crew member was waiting at the bottom with a bucket of iodine. No way. (laughs) God. (laughs) Damn. It's like, fuck you. Yeah, you're going to get burned. Like, oh, that would oh. suck so much. Oh. The film industry used to be insane. Like, the, yeah. the amount of stuff... That, they would, like, just kill animals on film because oh, the, yeah. back then there weren't, like, enough, enough regulations about it. It's like, oh, we need, like, a... We need uh, a horse to get shot in this film. Okay, shoot grab, a horse. Grab the horse, Jeez, yes. Yeah. Uh, in an unidentified Henry Lehrman comedy in 1919, comedian Billy Ritchie, while working on a short comedy film, was kicked in the stomach by an ostrich and sustained internal injuries. Oh, that's, oh, that's quite a fun one. He didn't die, thank you. Yeah, it's just, that's, just no, internal injuries. It's that's fine. fine. Fight with an ostrich. We've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the title of this film, I fucking love it. Haunted Spooks. <laughs> as opposed to the regular kind <laughs> yeah, just, like naughty scare like, time I guess spies 
Um, so, on the, so this was in 1920. On the set of a pl- publicity shoot that took place while filming, actor and comedian Harold Lloyd picked up what he thought was a prop bomb with the fuse lit. <laughs> But realised too late, the bomb was real. It detonated, (laughs) blowing off the thumb and first finger in his right hand and also temporarily blinding him. Why was there a lit bomb on set? (laughs) And why was he close enough to it to pick it up? Yeah, Yeah, what the fuck? (laughs) That's insane. It's just mad from start I like the idea that the film didn't involve a bomb at all. (laughs) He just, he saw the bomb and was like, oh, didn't know this was a scene. Oh, I picked that up. That's a good picture. Yeah. <laughs> Even if it was fake, though, why would you pick it up if it was lit? Yeah, oh, it's lit, fam. That's some Darwin <laughs> stuff right there. Yeah. So in The Conqueror, the 1956 film, the exterior scenes were shot on location near St. George, Utah, 137 miles downwind of the United States government's Nevada test site. In 1953, extensive above-ground nuclear weapons testing had occurred at the test site, by 1981, 91 of the crew and cast had developed some form of cancer, oh, and 46 God. had died of the disease. Jesus, that is not good. That's like that's a colossal fuck up. That's insane. Yeah, I wonder wow. if they got any compensation for that. I have. It doesn't say here. It also goes on to say several of Wayne and Hayward's relatives also had cancer scares as well after visiting the set. Oh, it's a fun Jesus. time for us. This is a good one. The film Shark! Exclamation mark. <laughs> Would anybody like to guess what happened? Were there real oh, sharks no. involved? Yeah. Oh, so God. this was a 1969 film, and a stuntman was mauled to death on camera when a shark, which was supposed to have been sedated, suddenly attacked. Oh, God. Like, why would you sedate a... Ra- oh, Jesus. It's just like... A lot of these, it's not even, like, accidents. It's just fucking negligence. It's yeah. stupidity. Yeah. God. Uh, cover stupidity. up. Stupidity. Cover up, 1984. While waiting for filming to resume, actor John Eric Hexham played Russian roulette with a 44 Magnum loaded with a blank. What? The gunshot fractured his skull and caused massive cerebral hemorrhaging when bone fragments were forced through his brain. Yeah, if you if you shoot point blank with a with a blank, it does like serious damage to you. That's it, yeah, insane. It, it still gives off a ton of energy. It, yeah. It'll just fuck you up. This is it's quite a fun little one. Well, I think I'm kind of getting a pattern going here. Get a fun one, serious one, fun one, serious one. <laughs> okay, it, I'm in, ready. In the 1987 film Full Metal Jacket, actor Vincent D'Onofrio, who had deliberately increased his weight to 280 pounds in order to play the overweight Marine recruit, twisted his knee during filming on the boot camp scenes. Oh, it was man. so badly injured, he required surgical reconstruction. Oh, oh dear. So, he yeah, had did, all that weight on his knee. Yeah, what the fuck? Did you ever see that video? I think it was at um, BlizzCon where there were some guys dancing on stage and a very stereotypical looking nerd gets up on stage, jumps up once, lands on his ankle and completely rolls it. And he's Oh, he's, God, oh, no, I haven't seen that. It's really funny. He, he just, I do, it's, <laughs> he literally, he does a bit of movement and then collapses to the floor in pain and has to be dragged off. Oh, God. Poor guy. He just wanted to get his boogie on. Oh, yeah. And gravity is a cruel mistress. He just wanted to it go is, down to Funky the Town. Boss. The Passion of the Christ, 2004. Oh, no, what happened to Jesus? <laughs> did, oh, did you'll they, never guess. Jesus. <laughs> did they literally crucify the actor because it was just easier than special effects? And he died. Sadly, not I quite. I thought you were meant to have sedated the Romans, guys. <laughs> <laughs> they just mauled him to death. In playing the role of Jesus Christ... Um, Jim Cav- Caviezel, I don't know how to pronounce that last name. Jim Caviezel, that's about right. Yeah, I'll take that. Sustained gashes to his back from multiple whippings, hypothermia, and a separated shoulder from carrying a giant cross. God. He was also struck by lightning before filming <laughs> the Sermon of the Mount scene. No way. Oh, Isn't, that's great. That's, that's a fucking message, if anything. Yeah, that's a sign from God, for sure. <laughs> um... I've seen, I remember we watched it in RE at school in uh, like year year 10 or something. And um, oh. I remember thinking when they, when they're like flaying him, there's this bit where they, they like, it's, it's worse than a whip. It's like a whip with like, it looks like it's got razor blades on the end, like hooked razor blades. Oh, and they go God. into his back and then the guy can't even get it out of his back. So he has to like put his foot on Jesus's back and like yank these blades yeah. out of his back. Oh. 
God. And it looked really realistic. And I was like, have they... Did they just... Was the actor, like, such a devout <laughs> Christian that he was like, I want you to literally... Because people do that. in um, Particularly in South America, there's these weird Easter festivals where people get, like, yeah. apart from the nails in their hands, they get, like, whipped and cut up and then they get, like, hung from a cross just by ropes. And it's because they're so, you know, like, devout. They're like, yeah, you know, I should do this for my faith. So I, I wonder like if it was real. It's flagellating Yeah, exactly. Like that. Oh, God, it's mental. So I, 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 I just... Like that, I mean, fair enough. It's bloody mental, but they're doing it for a reason. Like they want to just relive the pain Christ supposedly went through. And but in a film, you can fake a lot of that. Yeah, you can I mean, just change been, the angle a bit. The bit I'm talking about might well have been faked, but it looked really realistic. It was very convincing. And the fact yeah. that you're saying he suffered multiple whippings, I'm kind of inclined to believe they put blades in his back i don't know oh, jesus it's also because known racist mel gibson is a lunatic <laughs> oh, <known> racist <laughs> and he, mel di- gibson, yeah. he directed that one didn't he yeah, yeah i think yeah, so did. yeah mel melanie gibson mel g <laughs> mel g <laughs> i didn't know this this is quite a, a weird one uh, in lost the tv show in 2010 mm. while filming a fight scene for the series finale the end terry o'quinn mistakenly stabbed matthew fox with a real knife <laughs> oh instead of a collapsible one Jesus. Luckily, Fox's life was saved by the Kevlar vest underneath his shirt. Again, how does that happen? How, how is yeah, there a real knife there? Like the thing is, there would have been someone on set there whose only job it would have been was to make sure he didn't have the real knife in his hand. And no, there should never up. have been a real knife on set at all. Well, if the yeah, whole true. <laughs> well, I guess for certain shots they might have needed a real one, and certain shots had to be collapsible. But like, yeah. Like you say, it's it's someone's job. Just okay. Keep track of the real knife. Make sure that in the scene where he stabs him with the collapsible <laughs> collapsible knife, that it's a collapsible knife. You know. Yeah. He had one job. Mad. These last two are very morbid. I should have ended on a happier one, but we're going <laughs> to okay. go for it. Are you boys uh, fans of the Hobbit film series? Uh, I think they're all right. Yeah, I, I saw the, watched the first, first one. Two. Yeah. That's all. Well, turns out as many as 27 animals were killed during the production of this film. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Good. How yeah. are one of animals? Go on, Peter Jackson, you... Ooh. Mainly from Good. hazardous conditions of the farm they were housed in, several goats and sheep fell into a sinkhole under the farm. Oh, One what? horse... Yeah. A goat sinkhole. I didn't actually like acknowledge that line properly when I first got it. That's fucking hilarious. Doesn't make sense. <laughs> uh, one horse was hobbled and left on the ground for three hours. Another horse was killed after falling off an embankment of an overcrowded paddock. One horse had the skin and muscles of a teg lawn off by wi- uh, torn off by wire fencing, and Ugh. several chickens were mauled to death by unsupervised dogs or tra- uh, trampled by larger animals. Oh my god! Why were they all in just one tiny pen? Yeah, yeah. F- <laughs> just, uh, this is a really fine. shit farm. This is like our Minecraft farm. <laughs> they been, this, this isn't legal, right? Is it? <laughs> oh no, the goat sinkhole. Oh no! Had they all been shoved into a single hobbit hole together? Just to, <laughs> there's like three horses. <laughs> Four goats, loads of chickens. They're all just squished into a, a hobbit barrow somewhere. God. It's like, oh, Mr. Jackson, we're not using this set for a couple of weeks. Do you want to shove the animals in there? Yeah, yeah sure, go for it. Don't don't put them in that one. That's where Asda gets their ready meal meat from. <laughs> Actually, they don't mind. Any animal will do. Mm, delicious. Now, the last one is a real doozy. I think... Oh, Busby's coughing oh. up. I'm going to double check he's okay. 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 Yeah, go check on the ferret, man. <laughs> Peter, what's been your favourite one so far? Oh, I, I really loved the one where the woman drowned in quicksand. That was great. Yeah, that was really good. That was a good one. Yeah, and the man that drowned as well. Yeah, I liked it when the goat drowned in the goat hole. Yeah, the ones where things actually died or had permanent yeah. irreversible like damage done and diseases inflicted upon them. Yeah, I wasn't such a huge fan of, like, the accidents ones. Sorry. I'm all about the fatality Sorry, one second. Ones. I don't know where he is. <laughs> okay. Oh, but he's making noises. Is it, oh, is he gone again? He's, he's gone now, yeah. Okay, anyway, yeah, as I was saying, I'm all about the fatalities, Peter. Yeah, the ones where people, you know, just sort of injured themselves a bit and were in hospital for a few weeks and then they made a full recovery. <laughs> Boring. Shit. Rubbish. I like the ones that caused actual trauma and anguish for loved ones. That's what I'm all about. Yeah. No, me too. Mainly. Me too. In fact, I think I think we should bring that back. You know, there's so much health and safety nowadays. Why aren't you allowed to shoot a horse anymore? Yeah, nobody dies anymore. There's too many people. 
Yeah. Well, unless you're Everybody's in a Peter just Jackson living forever. Movie. Well, exactly. Yeah. If you're a horse in a Peter Jackson film, you're probably fucked. Yeah. But did you know that we should all aspire to be like that? Did you know that in um, in Titanic, uh, they actually just sank an enormous ship in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean and allowed uh, fifteen hundred people to drown to death in freezing cold water. Well, it was the only way. Yeah. How else were they going to make it realistic? Well, I don't know. I mean, it was the late nineties. You know, it's very difficult to uh, to to do that convincingly. Um, and that's why Leonardo DiCaprio hasn't acted since as well, because he's he's just at the bottom of the sea somewhere. Yeah, he got Leonardo decapitated. He really did. DiCaprio. Yeah. No, you got it. Yeah. You got it. Don't know what I was trying to do. What, what? do you want um, to? What do you want to do at work tomorrow? Um. <laughs> <laughs> I'm let's, sure the ferret's fine. Let's be. Yeah, if it's not, we'll feel really bad about it. Because Michael will yeah. have this audio. Sorry, one minute. I'm just corking him out from under the dishwasher. <laughs> That's okay. okay. That's fine. We're having a nice conversation. He's he, gone. He's gone again. Yeah, what do you want to do at work tomorrow, Pete? Uh, I've got to edit the, the tail end of my voiceover. And uh, start editing worst games ever. Yeah, you're going to have time? Yeah. We've got a... Uh, we got to stream. do a podcast tomorrow. Yeah. We've got a stream in the afternoon. Yeah, I don't have to finish either of, uh, you know, well, I'd like to finish the, the voiceover, but that won't take long. But I don't have to finish the, uh, the Worst Games edit until next week. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, that's <laughs> nice. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Is, uh, is he all right? He just sniffed up some dust, I think. He's still under there, but he'll be fine. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good. <laughs> the joys of owning fine. ferrets. Hooray. Anyway, I'll start again. So this last one is a real doozy. I think it's probably one of the worst accidents in recent history, at least, for cinema. Oh, God. It took place during the filming of Resident Evil, The Final Chapter, 2017. Oh. Okay. They released actual zombies. Someone no. was mauled to death. They hadn't sedated the zombie. <laughs> oh, that'd be quite fun, yeah. Let's get some real zombies. Come on, film Hollywood. You've got the money, you can make them. <laughs> Come on, film me, Wood. The reality, a little bit less fun. Okay. So stunt double Olivia Jackson was severely injured in a motorcycle accident on set in South Africa in September 2015, oh leaving her in a medically induced coma for two weeks. During oh a high-speed motorcycle chase, she collided with a camera arm. Among Jackson's injuries were cerebral trauma, a crushed and degloved face. Oh, oh That no. is the worst sentence I've ever had to read. Degloved. Oh God. A severed artery in her neck, a paralyzed oh. arm, several broken ribs, a shattered scapula. Scapula? Scapula? <laughs> scapula. That's, that's your collarbone, isn't it, I think? I'll go with that. A broken clavicle, torn fingers with a thumb that needed to be amputated, and five oh. nerves torn out of her spinal cord. Oh, oh my, my God. That, like, that is really bad. That's a hell of a list. So her paral paralyzed left arm was amputated in June 2016, and... Days after Jackson's accident, crew member Ricardo Cornelius was crushed to death by a Hummer H1 that slid off a, pat a platform he was operating. Oh, God, I think I might have heard Fuck. about that one in the news. Yeah, it was big news because it, it was like an absolute disaster. Like, yeah. First, like the first accident happened. It's like, oh, God, that's awful. And then someone got crushed by a fucking truck. <laughs> oh, that's really bad. That's yeah. a, And it's such a shame that that film was inevitably crap as well yeah, yeah. imagine having like they being, died for nothing being degloved for a for resident nothing. evil film uh the scapula is the shoulder bone and the oh. clav clavicle which you also mentioned is the collarbone basically she was fucked up from head to toe well yeah pretty oh, much man. i don't think it really matters Poor woman, which that's, horrible. that's just a terrible terrible yeah. thing but Gosh. thankfully these kind of things don't happen all too often anymore it's mainly um thanks to people in the 1910s putting sandpaper on wooden pyramids that accidents but, happened. But arguably the worst ones in that list <laughs> were the two most recent, I would yeah, say. Yeah, true. <laughs> and was, I think it was in Deadpool 2. There was like a motorcyclist was killed in that. Oh, no. So yeah, don't, don't be an actor or even a crew member. It's just not worth it. Gosh. No, just don't go near films. It's yeah. dangerous. Well, thank you so much, Mikey. Oh, Jesus. I'm glad I could uh, bring uh, some happiness to the podcast. Yeah. No, absolutely. I learned a lot. Don't feel safe now. Yeah, don't go outdoors. Anywhere. That's good. Oh, uh, so, we've got one question left. Yeah. Um, this is from 
Brightside, spelt B R Y T E side, Brightside, yeah. at Brightside underscore, who asks, What childhood norm did you rebel against at the time, but now you really enjoy or understand? For example, <laughs> naps, vegetables, certain rules. I mean, mm-hmm. I know that certainly I and, and probably Ben as well, and probably Michael, would agree that people just being noisy and obnoxious, like in the street or, you know, with their window open on like a Sunday afternoon, just like have some goddamn respect for everyone else. Yeah. yeah. I don't need to hear your music. I don't want to hear you screaming and shouting. <laughs> I want to just sit and enjoy the day and... Shut the fuck up, please. <laughs> Yesterday I was walking home from the office and I encountered two people having a conversation with each other about 50 feet apart and just screaming every <laughs> sentence at each other. God. It was just like, what? Just go a bit closer and shut up. God. Vegetables are pretty good now. Yeah. Oh, fuck Not yeah. going to lie, when you have vegetables, you feel like a superhero. <laughs> so, yeah, I've done good. Uh, yeah. So that's pretty nice. Yeah, Um, I used to be very anti-vegetable, but I do eat a lot more now. Also, not being allowed to eat bad food all the time. Yeah, that's yeah, that's. I need I need that kind of supervision. Yeah, you learn that lesson hard growing when when you've grown up. I can have this anytime I want. Oh, but I feel sad and fat and tired, and I'm covered in spots. (laughs) This isn't good. I, as a kid, used to really hate baths. Did you? I've I always used, loved you have baths. Dettol baths. Yeah, well, yeah, I did used to have Dettol baths, so maybe that's why. But <laughs> yeah. I would get so angry if I had to go in that bath. I'm like, oh, I don't like this, don't want to do this, and I'd avoid don't it. Don't put me in the sting sink. Oh, it hurts, <laughs> mummy. I used to avoid it at all costs, but I think over the years I've come to love, I, well, I love baths, and I, I especially miss baths it now. Are great. I don't have a bath in my flat. Oh. I just wish I could oh. soak. Just just put some Dettol in the, in the shower, just on the <laughs> walls. Yeah, it's time to test how tightly sealed those shower doors are. Yeah, just fill it up. Fill that mother up. It's like how some smells bring back happy memories for me. It's (laughs) Dettol. Mummy, no. Well, you shouldn't have slid down that sandpaper pyramid, Michael. (laughs) I've got the IED ready. Were Dettol baths your Vietnam, Michael? Maybe, actually. I think, yeah, I haven't smelled Dettol in a while, so maybe I'll have some kind of traumatic flashback when I it's do funny. It's funny. traumatic sink disorder. <laughs> One of the questions, I don't have the name now for citation, but someone asked, and I nearly asked this because I thought it was an interesting question, but I thought you might come up blank with answers. Like, what smell do you, like, really, really like? And what smell, what's, like, one of the worst smells you've ever smelled in the world? Oh, God. In the history of your life? I guess Dettol, um, you could say that... You know, brings back what is it? Happy memories or, or bad memories? Your Dettol well, smell. The main instance of uh, Dettol usage in our house was when I was hit over the head with a brick. Yeah, so I remember that. Not a great Dettol time. Yeah, yeah. Dettol probably concussed, probably some long-lasting damage, but no, a bath will do. <laughs> Just put your <laughs> Thanks, head ma'am. in the water. You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of really bad smells out there, but I think I think we can uniformly agree walking into. A public bathroom, whether it be at work oh, or just yeah. in public, that somebody else has made a real mess of, and it smells. Mm. It's, it's having to deal with someone else's stink is probably one of the worst smells, just from the fact that it's you don't have to be there, and it's not your fault. Yeah, I think I can pinpoint the worst smell I've ever smelled to oh, really? the bus station in the town centre of Sunderland. The men's <laughs> toilets is the most stinging, painful, visceral smell. It goes beyond the sense of smell into taste, like oh. it inv- invades your throat. It you can feel your it on vision. your skin. It's just, it was oh, strong piss. Oh. I mean, because I was going to say, um, arguably, I think, you know, Ben was saying public toilets, you know, whether it's out in the, in the, in the real public or if it's, in just, it's just in a building, like in the office. I think it's usually worse in like something like the office toilets because public toilets generally just smell so strongly of either piss or the cleaning stuff that they use. And yeah, it's not a nice cleaning smell. It's like a blend of cleaning smell and Dettol piss chemical. and shit. But but it, it at least sort of, it doesn't smell of pure turd. But like yeah. <laughs> sometimes you go into an office toilet and it's bad. It's very bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Um, so yeah, what childhood norm did you rebel against, but now really enjoy or understand? We've we've done some that we've answered the question. That's good enough. I'd say we've done it. Yeah. I used to um, uh, not want to sleep. Like I want to stay up. Well, I still want to stay up really late, but also in the morning I would just get up straight away. But now it's like no, I want my full eight hours. Thank you very much. God, full full yeah, eight hours yeah. of sleep. Oh, if you can get it. I've always yeah, been about a heavy sleeper though. I just don't wake up. Mm-hmm. In terms of a nice smell, though, very quickly, yeah, really good smell, like a lemony smell. And I'm not talking like cleaning products, lemony smell. I'm talking like someone has baked something infused with lemon, mm. and it just smells really nice. Yeah, mm. yeah, like natural lemon, not chemical. Yeah, lemon. like a citrusy, nice smell, it's sharp and refreshing. Ooh, oh that's yeah, a good smell. Sounds good. I New think. sheets, clean sheets. That's a nice smell. Clean sheets. I don't mean uh, new sheets out of the packet. I mean when you're, you know, it's laundry day. Yeah, yeah. You smell a bit like vinegar when it's out of the packet. Yeah, no, it's not great. But I think what you're after. Inverse to Ben's natural lemon smell. I really like the smell of chemical apple. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's, it's, I, it's, I can get that. It's, yeah, it's so sickly, but it's really nice. Like uh, a friend once had washing up liquid that was apple scented, and oh, oh, it was so good. I drank the whole bottle. It's delicious. My poops just. <laughs> Shot out. How how much? How strong is this? Should I add uh, two thirds of a cup of water, or is it? Can I just drink it straight? <laughs> I uh, we once had when we uh, lived in quite an old house in the country. At one point, we uh, a, a mouse died in the wall, just in the wall. Jeff? Oh Jesus! Oh. Yeah, it may have been Jeff. Um, could have been a mongoose, I suppose. And it was just down some wall cavity somewhere and there was just no way to get it. And so oh. basically just said on the internet, sorry, but you're just going to have to wait until it's completely rotted away, which can take, you know, depending on the climate and stuff, it can take just a few weeks or it could take a lot longer. Oh. So for a period of, I think it took quite a while, really. It was like two or three months. We had very strong plug-in um you know, air fresheners in every plug on the landing in the house. Oh, and just uh, to mask the dead mouse. Yeah, but kind of unfortunately or fortunately for me, it was one of my favourite smells, which is it's a kind of smell they they only tend to do at Christmas time, where it's oh. like kind of spiced apple. It's like cinnamon and apple. Yeah. Um, it's kind of hard to kind of know unless you you'll 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 definitely like you'll be able to find it at Christmas. It's kind of once you smell it, you're like, oh, yeah, that's the smell. But <laughs> That's Christmas. I really like that smell. And I, I was concerned at one point that, like, oh, no, this is going to ruin that smell for me because I'm going to forever associate it with, like, dead mouse. But I think, actually, it's had the inverse effect. And now if I'm, like, walking along, if I'm walking the dog or whatever and we walk past a dead animal that <laughs> smells a little bit, I don't... How often does that happen? <laughs> Well, I mean, in the in the countryside, not in you know the street, but uh, you know, okay. if, if I'm, on, I'm on the back road and there's just a squashed hedgehog, if it smells like it's a, a rotting hedgehog, still not very pleasant smell. But I think I can cope with it a lot better than I used to because I just associate it with Christmas now. No, oh. <laughs> just the sweet smells of Christmas. Mm. A dead hedgehog. Mm. Christmas oh. hedgehog. Delicious. <laughs> nice. Well, gentlemen. I think we did it. What an ending. This is Mambo number five. Mm. If you would like to support us financially, you can do store.yogscast.com. Navigate yourself to the video section and you'll find some delicious Podiots merchandise as well as a few other things as well. There's a US version of the store too, I believe, if you click the the flag icon somewhere at the top of the page. Yeah. And we have a discount code as well. Is that correct? Yes. Damn right. It's Vidiots. Use the code Vidiots at checkout for 10% off everything on the Yogscast store. So oh, if you fancy heck. some new dice, yeah. bam, get those. Fancy your Hat Films hoodie, bam, get that. But ideally buy buy your stuff. Yeah, if you fancy all of the Vidiots merch, please do That'd that. That'd be great, actually, yeah. Yeah. That we would we'd really appreciate that. If you'd like to find us on various channels, you can do YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, all dot com forward slash Vidiots Official. Nice. Twitch.tv forward slash Vidiots Official. We're taking it in turn in turns to in turns? In turn internals to stream. Uh, Mikey went last. I think I'm up next. Um I don't know 
what I'm going to stream, though, guys. So I'm not oh, entirely sure. Actually, on that uh, note, I think I've actually scheduled another stream this Saturday, but at the time oh, of well, release... Saturday just gone when yeah. it comes out. But you'll get the edited down version of that. It's a very special Draw the Friends episode. Yay! Yay! Nice. Um, if you'd like to see me some, if you'd like to see me something play in particular, that's the sentence. <laughs> okay. uh, send me a tweet. Let me know. Let me know what you want me to play, and I'll see if I can see if I can make that happen. As we mentioned at the at the top of the show, streamlabs.com forward slash vidiots official to donate and get a shout out. It's very much appreciated. The money comes straight to us and is split between the three of us, and it helps mm-hmm. us uh, do the show. It really does. If you'd like to see what Mikey's up to on a day to day basis, you can go and look at the Yorks cast. What are you working on, mate? It's Yogcon. It's just going to be Yogcon forever now. Oh. It's like five or six weeks away. It's scary. God. Oh, wow, it's yeah, come up fast. That has come up fast. It's August, isn't it? Yep, uh, but it's going to be good. Lots of fun stuff in store. So, yeah, keep your eyes peeled on the Yog, uh, Yogscast Twitch channel. Amazing. Fantastic. And if you'd like to see Peter and I on a day-to-day basis, youtube.com forward slash team triple jump. Team triple we- jump stream we do videos we do worst games ever we got some uh, familiar shows returning in the next month or so so if you could support us over there that'd be greatly appreciated too it's the video some of the videos kind of formats that you've you've missed oh it's yeah. gonna be good we finally reached a point where we've where we built up enough of a a support network by which i mean we've got lots of very hard-working people that have uh, that have hopped on board mm. over the last couple of months we're finally in a position where we can start to Look at bringing some shows back. So hello. Keep an eye out for, for those, please. Say hello. Hello. Thank what? you. Yeah. Finally, I don't know what's going on with iTunes. I've heard it's being deleted or yeah. something, but it still works for me. But if you'd like to leave oh, us awesome. an iTunes review or a review slash rating on your platform of choice, that would really help. Something about algorithms. And Yay. that's all I've got for you, boys. Do we have a question? Oh. Oh. Oh, God, sorry, I've, I'm distracted. My ferret's been sat on the floor for five minutes in the same spot. What's he do? What's you doing? Oh, okay. So I accidentally left some salmon oil treat on the floor, and so she's just been having a whale of a time. Oh, oh fuck! To... That's dangerous. She's gonna have really liquidy poops. Oh, good. On a scale of one to ten, how liquidy will <laughs> will Michael's ferret's poop be? I can go in on that. Place your bets in the good. comments, and then Michael, if we remember, will tell us on a scale of one to ten how liquidy the poops were in the next podcast. Yeah, I can't yes. wait. It's going to be a fun few days of tidying that up. I've, I've got the ferrets in my hands right now. This is bizarre. I'm trying to make Busby giggle, but it's not happening. He was giggling a minute ago. Oh, bless him. Oh. I can make him giggle. <laughs> okay, we'll make him giggle. <laughs> I'll, if I can, I'll record it and stick it in at the end. We'll pretend it happened. Okay. Wonderful. <laughs> Well, there we are. Thank you, boys or girls, for for coming along and and playing this pretend radio today. And we'll be back in a couple of weeks' time. You bet we will. Anything that either of you want to say before we bid adieu? Adieu. Um, just be be good to each other. I think you mean oh. uh, before we bid adieu. That's uh, yeah, before we bid you adieu. Yeah, without further adieu, uh, <laughs> we'll, we'll bid you adieu. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Right, okay. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Bye. 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 Bye.